Hello and welcome. In a previous video, we talked about G Helper, the control tool replacement for Asus laptops, particularly the uh, in the Strix series, the Zephyr series, and the Tough series, the gaming focused laptops from Asus. This is a replacement, a drop in replacement for Asus's Armory Crate software, which is quite heavy, a little bit bloated, loads tons of services on your computer, and can resume and can consume quite a bit of resources. You want to maximize the efficiency of your laptop so that you have the maximum gaming potential and you can get the maximum frame rates from your laptop. You don't want to be wasting resources, memory, etc., and CPU cycles on tools like this. So we talked in that video about how to get G-Helper installed, how to remove Armory Crate. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about all the different configurations and the features of G-Helper. We'll also talk about a few tidbits that you need to know in order to make sure that it functions efficiently. Otherwise, you may run into some quirks with this software because if you have G-Helper and Armory Crate installed, they can be sharing some services and that can cause issues. So that said, first and foremost, make sure you only have one of these softwares installed. They will be fighting for control over each other and that's going to return result in some very, very strange behavior where you try to switch modes in one application and it isn't reflected in another application and then when you try to switch into that mode again, you will get some very odd behaviors on your laptop. In order to keep everything nice and clean, you must make sure that all of your ASUS Armory Crate software components are uninstalled. So head over to your control panel, go over to apps, go to the installed apps section in your windows and make sure that you have AI noise cancellation, Armory Crate, Armory Crate service, ASUS framework service, Aura service and all of the other related services for ASUS installed. I'll leave a link or I'll leave a, a list of all those components down in the description below. Uh, be sure that you have them all removed before you install and launch G Helper and make that your default application for monitoring your laptop. Before you install G Helper, make sure that you have Microsoft's .NET 8 running on your system. If not, a link is provided here on this wiki page. I'll leave a link down below to these requirements. Make sure you have Microsoft's .NET installed so that it can actually work. Uh, you also need ASUS system control interface. This is the only service that you need running that's going to allow G Helper to work and it is the API that G Helper interfaces with in order to help monitor and control your laptop. Uh, also in the recommendation section here, please, please pay attention to these things and ensure you've done these on your laptop. Uh, it is also not recommended to have ASUS Smart Display Control, but as we can see here, we do not have display control running, so I think we are fine there. And of course, my ASUS is actually a choice. You can decide to leave my ASUS on uh, or you can remove it altogether. Uh, and lastly, before you set it up so that it's going to run smoothly, you'll need to go here to system, go to power and ensure that your power mode is set to balanced. You'll notice that it says uh, when it tries to proceed through the installer, eventually it'll come back and tell you that yes, you already have the ASUS system control service installed. If you get this message trying to install it, you will know you already have the ASUS system control interface and G Helper will run just fine. So just click OK here, OK here, finish this service. And now let's go to our G Helper, launch this application. So first things first, when you land in your G Helper here, you'll see that the few, there's a few different modes here. You can go to silent, which will really quiet down all of your fans and you'll get barely audible uh, fan noise from your laptop. You can go into the balance mode toggle here, of course, to turbo as well. And finally, fans plus power here is the equivalent of the custom mode. If you click on this here, you get a lot more options. This is akin to what you'd see in the manual mode in ASUS Armory Crate. So here we can see that there's two different tabs here. There's CPU and GPU toggles for all the different settings to uh, basically address the power limits of our CPU. And of course, overclock our GPU clocks and memory clocks, as well as power offsets and thermal target temperatures. Uh, on the right here, you also see some fan curves as well. You've got three different options here, silent, there is balance, and there is turbo. These are the fan curves that are defined and mapped to each of the modes. As you see here, if I toggle between the different modes, we can see that the mode here changes and also the fan curve that's apply, apl applicable to that uh, also changes. You can also click this plus button here to create a new fan profile and tweak to your heart's content uh, to really define or custom define your uh, fan curves here. Now let's go back to CPU here for a moment. We'll just go back to turbo and we'll see here that under CPU boost, we've got a lots of different options here 
here for different types of CPU boosts, whether it's aggressive, efficient, uh, efficient, aggressive. You can certainly play with all of these to see how the performance looks on the CPU, or you can manually adjust the PL1 and PL2 here. So PL1 being the sustained boost limit, uh, power limit, and PL2 being the short burst uh, high power limit that will come in there as well. So we can toggle this all the way down to 5 watts and this one all the way down to 5 watts as well. I wouldn't recommend that. And of course, you can crank this all the way up to 150 watts. That's not sustainable in this particular laptop, but it's giving you the range that you would see with perhaps most of the higher end laptops like Strix or Strix Scar, for example. Uh, a reasonable number here would be perhaps between 28 watts on the lower end and perhaps 45 watts on the higher end. So if you look at our CPU panel here, if we adjust these power limits and we click on apply, you'll notice here that the speed starts to change here. And if we go over to GPU tab, so you've got your core clock uh, limit here. So this allows you basically to address a limit or you know artificially limit the clock rate of your GPU. And from time to time, you may get these user account control messages. Be sure to click yes to allow G, G Helper to make those types of settings. Uh, otherwise, some, for some settings without that permission, it will not be able to do so. So be sure when you get that user account control message that you click OK and accept allowing G Helper to make changes to your GPU settings. So we'll leave that at default here. You have, of course, some core clock offsets so you can over uh, overclock your GPU here. And you can also overclock the memory on your GPU up to 500 megahertz and the core clock up to 250 megahertz. You'll need to test this in increments of five so you can figure out what is a stable overclock for your particular silicon it may vary if you get lucky you may be able to crank this all the way up and similarly for the ram as well of course we've also got here gpu power targets we can crank this all the way up to 95 watts this is the uh, rated power for the 4070 in this zephyrus g16 plus 20 watts of dynamic boost puts it at about 115 watts of total power and of course we've got thermal target temperature here for the actual gpu if you wish you could address this by pulling it down giving the uh, gpu some breathing room so it's not actually thermal throttling and causing your frame dips or any kind of weird stuttering if that is something that you experience so let's close this out we'll go back to the balance mode here just so we can demonstrate if you click on these figures here cpu fan and C, uh, excuse me cpu temperature and fan percentage you can toggle between percentage of fan usage versus fans in rpm that's a nice and handy thing to be able to see of course here you've got all of your modes for your gpu uh, currently, I've got it running in optimized mode, which means it's going to use ad, uh, advanced Optimus from NVIDIA. You'll need to make sure that this is also matching uh, by going into NVIDIA control panel and ensuring that you have the right setting selected there as well. And if you see here, when we launch NVIDIA's control panel, you should have Optimus selected in order for optimized mode to really be able to switch dynamically between uh, the integrated GPU and that dedicated 4070, depending on the application that you're running. Uh, we also have here some controls for the laptop screen. So 240 hertz plus overdrive mode is the default for this screen or the highest for this screen. Of course, you can leave it on auto, which will basically swap to 60 hertz when you unplug the AC power adapter and you're running on battery, uh, or you can force it down to 60 hertz if you prefer. Uh, by default, auto will allow you to toggle up to 240 hertz when plugged into the AC power and to 60 hertz when it's not plugged in. Leave this on auto. I don't think there's any real reason to toggle this otherwise. Uh, we've got here flicker free dimming so because this has an oled display oled displays tends to exhibit a little bit of flicker when you are dimming especially at lower brightness levels around 30 percent or so uh, and to control that you can adjust here you've got also here your tuning modes for your display of course you can change this between all the different settings if we swap it to fps for example it would change the color scheme uh, it's a little bit hard to demonstrate here but it is indeed changing the colors on the on the oled display of this uh, laptop here so fps might be slightly noticeable there highlights the dark areas a little bit it lifts the black so you can see uh, enemies hiding in corners for example if you're playing that type of a game you've also got option between warm and cold colors here on the display if i go to warmest it kind of yellows out the display it's a little bit it's not easily noticeable on this uh, capture here but trust me, indeed, it does work. And if you go to the coldest side, it gets quite blue. And finally, you've got native uh, native DCI-P3, display P3, and sRGB different gamut uh, calibrations here for the display that you can select between. If you select sRGB, that's 
pretty much what you'll be playing most of your games in they're mastered for srgb color space you can alternatively skip or select dcip3 if you're doing color sensitive work photo editing uh, video editing things of that nature you've got slash lighting here you can turn on and turn on or off uh, the slash lighting here change the different modes of what you want it to do and change the intervals and of course you can disable this on battery or disable it on closing the lid uh, we have laptop key, uh, keyboard configurations here so if you function lock this on you'll get this nice little display here and now if i press f1 for example uh, i'll get the uh, the uh, volume mute and unmute option if i unlock this my function keys will function as standard f1 through f12 keys uh, laptop keyboard you can select the different uh, different uh, rgb modes here so breathing cycling etc uh, if i for example select breathe here i can then choose a color and say let's go with green for example and i don't know why it's jumping off to the sides here that's a little bit odd oh yes uh in certain cases windows 11 now comes with dynamic lighting which allows it to take control of lighting settings i find this to be very very annoying turn this off if you want to be able to use g helpers if you click on this extra button here next to the laptop keyboard section you'll get here a bunch of different things which allow you to one map your key bindings here for these shortcut keys that uh, also map to volume down up mic and the g helper window uh, these are uh, set above the keyboard itself and of course you can map a few of these here which are the shortcut keys so for example fnv will allow you to toggle between the different types of uh, display modes depending on the type of game that you're playing uh, that said you can also use function c here so if you press function c it will lock the function or unlock the functions are actually f1 through f12 and if you press function c again it will lock them so now they act as media keys and you can use your brightness level up and down and your vault in your you know keyboard brightness toggle etc and finally the last one here is uh, function f4 so if you press this it's going to toggle between the different modes of your RGB keyboard. You can see here it's going between the different things. I don't know why a G helper keeps jumping off to the side. That's a little bit of an oddity here. Uh, all right, we can also adjust the laptop backlight from here, from this slider. Uh, and of course, you know, this basically is the brightness control for the backlight on the keyboard. You can also do this with, if you have your function lock on, the F2 and F3 keys on your keyboard. Uh, so you'll see here that there's there are three different levels off there's low medium and high and as you toggle between that uh, unfortunately one thing that's not being reflected here is you're not seeing this laptop backlight slider uh, reflect what state your backlight is currently at would love to see that fix in a future release of this application but nonetheless keep in mind this is a totally free application and it's an open source project so if you have the skill or desire you can certainly jump in there contribute to this application to make it even better uh, we've also got here some uh, controls for the laptop backlighting uh, so when it uh, when it's awake when there's one on boot up on sleep and you can also adjust here the animation speeds for your rgb so you can change it to normal or fast slow this down it would be nice to see some granular controller there and then timeout on plugged in or on battery you can choose to delay and turn off the backlight on the keyboard after a while 0 to 60 seconds is the default additionally if you find if you need to access the logs because you're not sure what's going on or you're having some issues with the application when you can go in here to extras and at the other section here and over at the right you'll see a little log icon if you press that you'll get a log here that can be shared or you know posted somewhere to help uh, troubleshoot and determine what's going wrong with the application you can configure your cores here your p cores and your e cores you can affect which one of them how many of them are active and click apply you can also enable your gpu on shutdown so this is uh this is an issue that sometimes if you toggle into eco mode for example so let me see if i can demonstrate that here if i go into eco mode you'll see here that my nvidia gpu is now gone now let me try to toggle back on to optimize mode again see if we can get our gpu back and in certain cases if the gpu doesn't come back having this toggle means when you shut down the machine and turn it back on it will restore the gpu and you'll be able to get back into it i guess this is a workaround for a bug with eco mode so be sure that you're aware of this uh, if you switch from optimized to eco mode and then later wonder why you can't get your uh, discrete gpu back make sure you head in here click this toggle shut down your machine and on reboot you should be able to get your gpu back and of course there's some other options here 
here stop all apps using the gpu when switching to echo this could be dangerous you could cause some applications to crash but if you're sure that when you switch to eco mode you want things to be forced out from that gpu then this is an option that's there for you and of course you can keep the gpu disabled when it's on usb c charging uh, but it's in optimized mode i would select this option because you only with only 100 watts of power delivery over usb type c you're not going to be able to power that gpu and the cpu uh, in in this laptop and you can turn the toggle uh, the boot sound on or off this is when the starts from a cold boot you'll hear a sound from asus you can choose to either turn that off or turn that on you can also turn off overdrive if you feel that you're getting some blurring or some visual artifacting that uh, bothers you you can keep this application window on top at all times so for example if you're running things and trying to tweak your settings it might be handy to keep this app open and you can change this to a chromatic icon monochrome icon and also note that hovering over some of these options may give you some additional information the auto toggle clamshell mode is when you close the lid and you have external monitors connected allowing you to use this basically in lid closed mode as a desktop computer with a keyboard and mouse and of course you've got an option here to force this into hibernate so if you like to leave your laptop but uh, be able to resume without draining your battery with those smart standbys you can actually uh, hibernate your laptop which will save all the state to disk and then when it resumes it will actually recall all of that information back and of course finally find at the bottom here you can see here that we've still got eight asus services running if you right click on your start button go to computer management you'll see here that under services if we expand services there's still a few asus services running and these can be shut down from here so if i go over to here click stop you'll notice that all of these services will get stopped and now they'll be uh, basically consuming less resources even more so on your system and of course you can always start these back up by hitting the start button again and they'll be restarted for you so if you go here and refresh you'll see that all of these asus services have now been stopped consuming far less resources on your system and finally you can set the battery charge limit here so if you want to stay plugged in for all all the time or you stay plugged in for long periods of time at your desk you can always uh you know address the charge limiting here to preserve and prolong the battery life of your laptop and you'll see here that the battery health indicates 95 percent battery health on my particular machine of course click this toggle if you want this to run on startup it will automatically start and be in your tray when it's running you can right click and if i go here i'll demonstrate if you click on this it'll minimize you click on it you can expand it again if you right click you can change between the different uh, performance modes as well as gpu modes just by right clicking without having to actually open the g helper interface and finally if you click updates here you'll see here that it can detect the bios it can detect all the other drivers that you have installed on your system so you really don't need that my As my asus application for other than just checking your warranty if you've done your registration initially upon purchasing your machine you should have to really worry about that except when you need service you can always go back and quickly install that application but without it installed you can come in here find all the updates and certainly uh, figure out if you have to uh, if you need to do any updates here and if you do see something that's red it means there is an update available you can just right you can just click on it it will open a browser and launch and start downloading the updates direct and we'll see here that if we look at how much resources are being consumed by g helper we'll see here that g helper is barely using 40 megabytes of memory and it stays consistently under 40 megabytes or so roughly for most of the time so that's been a detailed overview of g helper hope you found that helpful another resource i want to point out is the actual g helper uh, wiki so if you go to the wiki on their github page you'll find here troubleshooting there's lots and lots of helpful tips here please read through this stuff before you you know make a comment about something is not working and of course there's the power user settings here if you really want to tweak this to your heart's content there's lots of different options here that you can go in and customize to really have your machine behave the way that you like it uh, so lots and lots of reading i ur urge all of you to go and read all of these uh, so that you're familiar with the application if you're going to be using it to control your laptop all right that will wrap it up for this video i hope you enjoyed this content please like uh, click subscribe and share this video to help this channel grow and uh, thanks very much for watching we'll see you in the next video